Welcome everyone to another OS design series, micro kernels or other stuff you're playing along at home. And today, not a rant of me figuring out some stuff is not amazing. No other people wrote about stuff is not amazing. So some company persons uh, blog that I already discovered some week or so ago they write here modern storage is plenty fast like previous video NVMe uh, stuff PCA4 and so on or even PCA3 already it's uh, API set are bad uh, recurring theme here and I wanted to shortly like in some 20-30 minutes discuss here some details and this is also the reason if you're wondering why do not just sit here and write my microkernel dreams first of all previous videos commercial viability and second of all uh, brainstorming. I'm still uh, still using some free time, uh, lunch breaks and, and nights and stuff and collect some thoughts, uh, sort my thoughts and uh, trying to figure out what are the best ways. Because fun fact and pro tip, it's always best to start with um, design drafting and um, making some um, actually coming up with some proper design and stuff at least somewhat before sitting and writing all the code. So what's they write here and I wanted to discuss. So um, you've seen read and writes on SSDs in and also Intel Optane, which by the way, fun fact, maybe I should get some, um, in a very, very high gigabytes per second range. And the problem is that modern, modern, <laughs> vintage software stacks with open read write and similar um, system calls are potentially not the very best suited and um, what they write here um, is working on high performance storage solutions copying as so it starts already you want the stuff zero copy because even the latest and greatest AMD uh, epic thread ripping stuff uh, only so many 30 40 gigabytes per second read and write so you don't want to waste cpu memory and storage pcie throughput in copying data around so lesson number zero zero copy for the verse um, and also e apis right so uh, nvme devices so also interfaces certainly previously we had block based um, uh, seek, read, write APIs on IDE, SCSI, Fiber Channel. Uh, then we had AHCI, and now we have NVMe. And what they also write here, and I actually until this article didn't pay too much attention, is not only open, read, write because if you want to access something, you open it, you read, write, you seek, and this stuff certainly is um, a lot of overhead of transitioning because between user space and kernel space or, or whatever your boundaries might be. But another thing is also what they found um, is that even if you, and we will see some APIs in a minute, but another thing is that some of this stuff like IO scheduling, it turns out, not necessarily I just summarize here, but um, from all also potentially other articles, not, not all of this might be in this article, um, but also some stuff like uh, scheduler. So for for very fast API, some completely fair I/O scheduling might actually be counterproductive because storage is so fast. It's in that cases better to just directly read and write this from an NVMe PCIe API than uh, it is previously going through some I/O scheduler for some mechanically rotating storage device plus the additional thing that I also didn't think about um, until this year is that for this vintage rotating magnetic storage stuff the kernels usually have stuff like read ahead because it turns out that if you already seek on your spinning rotating storage if you seek somewhere that seek time is relatively large it's better to just read ahead a little bit um, and then seek to the next whatever the next application like you start Firefox this stuff is loading some cookies some some database some cached files so it's uh, for decades was preferable to read ahead a little bit so rotating storage seek somewhere with your head and then read a little bit more read 
uh, read a little bit more into your caches and buffers um, just because probably the application asks for uh, the next bytes eventually anyway and memory um, usually back in the day and today you have enough anyway. So it turns out with this latest and greatest high performance APIs I read ahead I think uh, that probably was in uh, ahead was it in this article maybe maybe not um, read ahead probably again I just summarize so it turns out probably it was in this um, so it's uh, increasing so this is this is high performance very direct uh, um, non rotating magnetical magnetic head head seeking stuff read ahead similar to IO scheduling like completely fair algorithms at times counterproductive so uh, another thing is also that this traditional APIs don't e exploit parallelism um, even in the early SSDs um, and even SCSI drives or, or later IDE drives as uh, there was command queuing and so with this imagine a high performance database a high performance web server file server or any kind of high performance storage stuff you usually have more than one thread of io interaction going on be this multiple clients sync your web server uh, all the internet accessing your video on demand or e commercial e-commerce uh, website and so you always have more or usually unless you are a startup and you have only one the, the first trust but after a while you usually have plenty of users accessing your service and um, demanding multiple css files image files and so on you so whatever the case might be or high performance um, biological or ai stuff and so this old apis as I mentioned, open, read, write, um, and seek. So this looks like this here. This is a file. The application read uh, the, the kernel. So this in, previously this wasn't in, uh, this wasn't instant, um, and today even isn't instant. Even on a PCIe um, SSD, it takes some milliseconds, or nanose nanoseconds. Um, so read, wait, data return. So this is um, a, between application and kernel and UIO layer whatever that might be and um, so read wait data return processing read write and of course there um, have been already solutions for that so there was so over the decades of course even in in vintage stuff commercial unixes uh, maybe even as old as irix there have been stuff and also in linux so let's take a look and jump into another presentation because certainly don't want to just read your one presentation and this is general just a summary of the stuff and before we continue and people tune out of this live stream so the reason why i um, summarize this here is for two things uh, first thing is i hope you learned something and a lot of this stuff is new to people watching these videos and this is in general my hope with these videos in this educational series and second of all i'm also wondering if we can design a modern microkernel, not microkernel doesn't matter, a modern kernel, um, micro or monolithic, if if there are, if we can apply design patterns um, to some much more modern design than Unix is um, to f facilitate this kind of um, parallel parallelism, ah, man, what a what a word and um, in general like also higher in general not only also generically not only for storage but f as i said already this is also not entirely new i had here a video in uh, july already um, of something i blocked already a couple of years ago um, before i made youtube there on, on my uh, on my blog here at that site so I uh, mentioned this already because uh, in July someone proposed there's some read file system call which I thought is uh, still think is silly and in my opinion would be much more amazing um, to use vec.io and this uh, is something that the Linux kernel implemented a little bit um, facilitating or implementing this idea of um, parallel and asynchronous requests because it turns out as I wanted to say there have been a couple of APIs and for example AIO as asynchronous IO because the problem with this 
classic APIs, open, read, write, seek and stuff is, it's synchronous. Um, your application issues, um, executes the system call, um, sets up the arguments like file descriptor, um, buffers, read, write, executes a system call and the kernel does the processing and until that data is ready, which might take some time, take a while on a magnetic, magnetic old rotating storage or is rather fast, but still takes a little bit of a while. And it's only one request, right? If your application, the database, um, um, MySQL or whatever the open source fork of that might be or SQL, SQLite in your browser or uh, what whatsoever, um, all the different possibilities, you have, you already know you need some data from there, some data from there. You cannot queue this here in parallel and asynchronous. So turns out, of course, there have been some like vectored like this API. So it turns out actually also from, from many uh, new here to this low level stuff, read and write is not only the only thing. There have been already a couple of variants of that. Um, we have one thing that I uh, usually like to use is this read write v for, for vectored um, that looks like that. So the difference is you have here IO vectored stuff, so you can, but only from one file descriptor. If your database needs some data from the beginning, the middle and the end and stuff, you can queue that. Um, and the other thing is additionally P write that is with some um, P read and write that is with some offset. So instead of just read and write file descriptor buffer, it is also integrating seeking, but of course, this is very similar. This is also why I don't like this proposal of, is it Greg Crow Hartman or someone? Um, I find it really silly. So we have, we have already a couple of APIs that are all very limited and very um, special purpose of, but we need some offset here. Let's integrate seeking, let's integrate uh, vectoring, but this vectoring only for one file descriptor. So everything very limited. And then we have AIO, also best not to, uh, um, type offset one key. So this is asynchronous stuff of um, asynchronous IO CBP. And turns out this was never very efficient in Linux as they write here in their own Linux kernel um, paper. POSIX has asynchronous AO read and write. So this meaning you initiate this and get the notification or come back to this later when it's done and you can processing. So your web server database can continue accepting or doing compute other stuff and so on. Um, like accept the next request and then delivers this out to the clients when the data is ready. And as they write here, so this was never, um, never too efficient in Linux because now YOLO, whatever, who cares. And for those cases, uh, suboptimal and asynchronous interface is desired and satisfies those needs. However, it turned out the implementation of those most, uh, most often lackluster and performance was poor because yeah, implementing some API and then it's like, yeah, whatever, good enough, not never really taken too much attention. Also probably, probably to be fair, a decade or two ago, um, IDE and SCSI drives were uh, not yet as fast as PCIe, direct connected PCIe storage. And so the solution for that in Linux, um, I mentioned it briefly in the previous video, IO ring. This is an IO user space ring buffer, um, a high performance thing. Um, however, as it turns out, uh, Linux, it was not perfect. So to my surprise, you would think in 2020 or this was already implemented some year ago. And over this year, there were a couple of fixes, right? This is also monolithic kernel, right? Why I want some multi-server microkernel stuff. Because over this year, I, you've seen you in this video, I follow the changelog. Um, I try to scroll over it and, and distill the, the biggest issues out of there. There have been a couple of fixes there. It was always like um, this edge case and this buffer over under run and this and that. But anyway, so the idea of this, I wish they would have here some nice diagram, but they haven't actually. Maybe I should have checked Google image search file IO U-ring. Um, but the idea is that you have some user space buffer 
um, probably like that. And this is a little bit like you have seen in my previous videos working on low level graphic stuff like Word, Voodoo, um, Silicon Motion, Number 9, and P3, NVIDIA um, RSX. And so this is a little bit, I would say, like um, GPU command submission, if that is something you worked with, um, in that you have, uh, you don't, uh, you don't initiate a system call, but you have one circular ring buffer, um, memory area where you place those um, com commands. You set this up. Obviously, you need to tell the kernel, hey, I want this uh, I/O ring buffer here with I/O setup. Um, then you submit this stuff and get events. And this is, of course, so the Linux kernel also gradually, and why we have this um, huge, yeah, to many people's surprise, a lot of people didn't even realize there have been peer read and write and read v and write v and peer read and vi uh, write v. And even last but not least, peer read version 2 or v2, yeah, vectored version 2 and right version 2 and IO also yeah. um, this is a little bit getting out of hand uh, in my opinion um, e too many APIs but um, last but not least now we have this Linux solution also 2020 or 2019 or whenever this was implemented maybe we should actually check with Wikipedia or somewhere we could probably um, check this also elsewhere but maybe in Wikipedia has this is uh, I.O. ring um, because it actually would be interesting to know when this was um, uh, ringing. Uh, maybe this was this implemented in 2019. I don't know if, if you know when this was added to the loose kernel. Let me know. But the point is we now have um, a wide variety of APIs. And the issue a little bit, in my opinion, is that of course, this, this new things of um, I.O. Ring, for example, Linux only solution right now. I wonder if the BSD people will copy this or Windows, Microsoft there with Windows and Apple with Mac OS because it's a little bit, nah, Linux has some solution that is relatively happy. It's of course a little bit error prone and um, uh, low level-ish, but yeah, at least it's pretty high performance. So if you're interested in this stuff, I.O. Uring, also this, vlog mentions that he is not entirely um, towards so towards better I APIs. This author has not so, um, written extensively in the past about how revolutionary I.O. Euring is, which is also why I mentioned this in the previous video and wanted to make a dedicated video about this. I think, however, uh, he mentions that is um, fairly low level. So yeah, fairly low level, just as I mentioned, um, and they think it's just one piece of the API puzzle because IO dispatched through IO Euring still suffers from most of the problems listed previously uh, in regards to buffered files, read ahead, and so on. Scheduling direct IO is full of caveats, um, and IO Euring being or interface doesn't uh, even try, nor should it, to hide those problems in regards to direct IO versus um, buffers and scheduling. And um, also what is uh, interesting is that I think they implement here some additional gglomio uh, or previous videos um, in 2020 of stuff you don't know how to pr pr pronounce it, but glo glom glom io. Um, I think uh, it was on Rust. And what they also do is here, for example, um, read ahead in user space. So really interesting ideas of read I, in, in, in today's storage directly connected integrated circuit flash based PCIe connected high performance and low latency storage stuff. Um, not only do you need such kind of high, perf high performance low level APIs of, of ring buffer stuff and um, also, 2020 read ahead in your application could actually be beneficial in terms because your application might have had have a much better understanding about the data layout in a database in whatever caching or sync um, 
machine learning, artificial intelligence, and whatever the case might be. So your application might have a have much better idea of what data it needs next to read ahead intelligently while your massive parallel GPU kind of fabric stuff is doing the, the, the neural network stuff. So um, long story short, there are plenty of APIs. There are in very interesting solutions like IO Uring, but they just don't solve everything. You still need to know what's going on in your storage in regards to buffers, read ahead, scheduling, and potentially do your direct IO and um, read ahead in user space, which also raises two other points. Because uh, one more thing is so much for Apple, two more things. The first thing is, um, I. Uh, the first thing is, this actually is a little bit the case of micro microkernel multi-server stuff because it turns out with this kind of specific workloads, if you already do all this stuff very intelligently in your application in terms of direct I.O. and application specific, this like memcache and read ahead, maybe a lot of stuff could be done very intelligently and high performance in multi-server microkernel situations. And secondly, um, I wonder, and this is also what I want to research over the next years, if you apply this kind of modern um, API solutions in terms of IOU ring, I wonder if you build a, a mic micro multi-server microserver, because the problem of microkernels in the past always has been the increased context switching, um, what I also already mentioned in previous videos. And I would argue, I would actually, and as seen with Intel Spectre, we anyway need to sacrifice 10, 20, sometimes even up to 50 or even more percent, and depending on your system core workload, um, for security due to the, all the security vulnerabilities in your hardware. And I always argued I would with pleasure give up 10% or so of my performance if I have a much better, um, much more secure and even potentially much easier to work with or scalable solution. I mentioned anyway previously intelligent APIs even in terms of this um, author's uh, findings here. Uh, it could even be if you build much more intelligent algorithms in terms of GPU implementations, they are think Wayland versus Xorg and stuff. Um, a multi-server um, multi server microkernel solution might even deliver better performance if you just implement, if you have the freedom because you can have much, much higher level and think Linux kernel, frame buffer, text scrolling removed because too difficult, accelerated scrolling removed because it is too difficult. It's like what, so yeah, what, what does, what, what gives if uh, all the, all the state of the art scrolling and acceleration, sure there is still DRM and 3D and stuff, but just to um, give some examples of it was too complicated, we just remove it and think Certainly you want a high performance 3D API, certainly neither scroll back nor accelerated scrolling that high performance. But if we already have a graphic subsystem in user space for Mesa and Wayland for high performance graphics, then for sure maybe it is better to move everything in some user space servers, whether it is graphic storage and network and stuff. Sure, there are challenges, but I wonder if we apply such kind of user space IO uh, buffers uh, for high performance communication. Um, I wonder what performance you can implement um, even in such kind of modern microkernel situations where you have your file system. I would, however, I said in my previous video already for performance, sure, you can have like maybe GNU heard, not sure, can't study every system and memorize every single detail. But if you have something like GNU Herd, which may or may not be, but uh, have one process per file system, I said it before, um, it is already a progress. If, for example, all your storage for performance, because the problem is if you have like, if you have if 20 storage devices, like 20 SSDs in a high performance uh, server, um, 
if it is uh, better for performance, if you really need the performance, sure, you can, like GNU heard, have 20 user space drivers, potentially, maybe, not sure. But I said already in the previous videos, which I have a couple of uh, those in, in terms of OS design stuff, um, it is still maybe a um, beneficial design decision to have a user space storage because if that crashes, only that crashes, not your network stack and everything else like graphic and whatnot, and you could like Minix potentially restart that uh, on the fly, like Windows also, um, I think, can restart the graphic stack. And instead of 20 PCIe drivers, maybe still have one storage server, one file server uh, for the performance. Um, think great, but certainly it is way too much overhead if you have 20 instances of an NVMe PCIe driver and uh, then some inter-process communication or user space U-ring communication going on. So certainly for the performance, um, you probably want one file server um, or storage block, storage object, whatever you want to name it and, and implement it just to minimize this kind of file system rate, um, LVM logic, logical volume management stuff going in between multiple servers. So, but also I said in previous videos, you could make this flexible, right? You could make a design decision that um, if you want to separate this for performance, you could, but this could be an option. Also, the, this is the, the amazing stuff of user space stuff, right? In kernel, everything is more difficult, but in user space, um, think Wayland and um, other OpenGL Vulkan GPU stuff, just as an example, or web servers, um, Apache, uh, Lightning uh, engines and stuff, Memcached. It's configuration, right? It could be actually a configuration choice whether you want to instantiate uh, 20 different storage servers and run all of them individual for virtualization reasons or whether you want to run them all in one user space process um, on top of your microkernel um, if you need the performance or even flexible, right? I mean, nowadays everything is a virtual machine, uh, usually anyway. Whether you want to run four of those PCIe's, like groups of fours, and have those pass to virtual machines or running um, para virtualized uh, there on top of this, uh, which was the initial design anyway. Many people don't even know, last but not least, and then we probably end this live stream. Um, Xen started uh, out as a para virtualized solution. Um, uh, maybe uh, Wikipedia has some details on that because I'm so long in the industry um, and, and who is even, <laughs> comment below, who's using Xen um, or other stuff. But it started a long, 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 long time ago, initial release uh, 2003. And initially this was, um, as so often a research project at the University of Cam uh, Cambridge and um, PhD student and thesis and stuff. And initially this was before the advent of hardware assisted virtualization, which we only needed because x86 did not fulfill the um, virtualization theorems there um, due to instructions behaving a handful of special hardware state and also exceptions behaving differently whether you run in user space or kernel space, because otherwise you wouldn't need this um, special instructions, I think. Some architectures may not even need this, uh, special system, maybe PowerPC. Unfortunately, MIPS needs this because MIPS has a special treatment of kernel segments of caching and mapping that is really unfortunate. Um, but um, probably there are a couple of uh, architectures which probably could make a dedicated video board. But a point is uh, that this started out uh, for para virtualized guests, which means that at that time we didn't have Intel and AMD hardware assisted virtualization. And that means similar to a microkernel, which was a point I wanted to make is that in a microkernel similar to Xen, you could actually run directly um, or directly or, or specially compiled for instances of uh, Linux. There also has been this Apple previous videos, even I of my long history of YouTube videos in the meantime, uh, this MK Linux that was a research from no other than Apple's microkernel MK Linux um, that I have run here on this uh, vintage Mac um, 
someone gave me from the recycling bin. So Linux running as Mach tasks and also others have actually done the same with L4. So there is L4 Linux, in case you were wondering, also best without typo, um, running Linux in L4 microkernel user space tasks. And this is similar to Xen. So this is also what a, nowadays, when you use a Linux kernel anyway, mostly as a virtual machine multiplexer in your data center uh, hosting or otherwise personal Hackintosh and Windows gaming needs and uh, something that a microkernel, which is exactly what this allows in terms of Xen of para virtualized processes and guests there on uh, similar how you would run this in a microkernel stack and um, of course nowadays also supporting hardware virtualization but uh, initially this was about that and so this is IO ring and uh, this is what I meant with um, flexible, similar to what you do nowadays with even not only Xen but also KVM, the kernel based virtual machine, is nothing else than similar to yeah, um, this microkernel stuff of several user space processes um, running their thing and just more cleanly of having less trusted compute base uh, or code base in terms of a monolithic kernel, but just having the bare minimum scheduling and, and, and pro process and memory management and process scheduling and stuff and, and hardware abstraction. And um, yeah, so not, not unheard of, certainly similar in concept to not only Mach L4 and Xen and certainly in this day and age of virtualization. And if we already virtualize everything for certainly manageability and performance and not performance, manage manageability and certainly performance lacks a little bit. Um, manageability and security, I wanted to say, then um, having at least in there certainly is would be a preferable choice. Um, and um, yeah, so sometime soon um, I will finish some of the level code and start to boot some own code. This is also why I'm not, I could just take L4 like other people's do with this also it's like yeah sometimes update oh is there's an update uh, is this hey is there because i recently looked there's the last time i looked there so there there's an update maybe we give this a try and play with this but the reason i don't take just l4 l4 is certainly it's quite quite popular but i want to do some real research right and using this other big projects it's always not as nice to edit around there and i want some documentation and um, also starting with a bootloader. So basically I said this before, um, one code base to also rule the boot process because grub2 complexity, I said this before, grub2 like Emacs already becoming nearly an own operating system and I would prefer to significantly overhaul the whole process here, which, uh, yeah, huge task. But anyway, I hope you learned something from all of this stuff, uh, be this, um, old-fashioned APIs that uh, you might never have used that could all in your everyday programming um, improve your application in terms of read with offset, uh, basically integrated seeking, uh, vectored, read and write, and asynchronous I.O. or this, uh, if you are working in this field, you probably have already discovered or have this on your to-do to try and use I.O. Uring. And uh, my frustration is um, with the Linux kernel, so not only monolithic, but also the silly, um, in my opinion anyway, uh, which of those many tabs has it been this, or uh, this the silly new system call. I think, um, play all, oh, where's more videos. As uh, a silly, silly uh, in my opinion, silly things. And this was even rehashed, right? Recently, just the other week, uh, they sent it again, um, this read file. Instead, um, it's like, yeah, like what is the system called? Previous video reading whole file. Instead of focusing on um, making high performance stuff uh, really great, they propose here really silly things, uh, read file and like even for, um, for what do they propose it? Man, did we do many videos? Um, 
read file. I had it previously, but no, six months ago it should be somewhere here. Was it not read? It should have been read file. Anyway, um, because as I proposed in this video, vector.io, I would much more pr appreciate uh, this. And like if instead of some yet another system call for reading a whole file, uh, this is so silly, I have no words. And professional kernel developers proposing that um, it's like, nah, <laughs> what are they thinking? Um, reading a whole file and it, it's um, because I think my solution vector system call even Linux Linux Torvalds I figured this after the video probably I should find it is it longer than six months so um, read file ah here it's uh, too too much in front of me to actually find it I only after this found that Linus Torvalds himself I didn't even know this this is also why I I could just do my research uh, in the basement or attic and tell nobody and and then come out with some research paper or whatever um, I thought it's uh, nice to build a YouTube channel around this and some of the stuff I also only discover later because turned out that Linus Torvalds himself proposed something so not only the too drunk and too much hallucinating uh, YouTuber here coming up with his ideas but no Linus Torvalds himself um, had something like this um, not as cool as my solutions um, in my opinion so um, he drafted even some patch here for Vector, how did he call this? Because it turns out in 2007 there was already a generic I.O. scheduling stack stuff discussion of similar to my concept, just not as flexible. And um, so my idea is not that crazy if Linus himself, Torvalds, proposed here something. Um, he called it, how did he, was it fibers or uh, manhole? What did he call it? Really small patch, something totally. Mm, ludicrously simple uh, something man how did he call it blah 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 yada yada Linus come to your point he writes you more longer than my YouTube video usually is um, man how did he call it here uh, whatever we probably get something off asynchronous whatever system call anyway um, the clever idea of my stuff here proposed in this video and maybe previously on my blog here already in uh, hopefully not um, uh, whatever um, is that my proposal uh, includes because my flexible vector system code proposal would include um, exactly this, this scenario of implementing read file in open read, write, close and the magic in my design proposal is to have a either in this vector table I wonder did I, I was it in this or I uh, here probably so um, in my proposal would have been um, is it in here uh, whatever um, use the previous system call result um, and because my understanding is theoretically my vector system call stuff you could do mostly in IO U-ring, except the only thing you don't have is open and then continue to use this return value for read write and stuff and um, they have a really silly proposal I have in my uh, in my opinion and they, they um, um, just generate open this predefined um, file descriptor um, value file descriptor some description um, uh, which I find really silly so, so that proposal is a, a new open variant um, somewhere it was of um, file descriptor open uh, whatever somewhere Ah, here, selectable file descriptors. A really stupid proposal, in my opinion. Um, but <laughs> I'm only a random YouTuber. Um, so what the proposal is, as far as I understood this, is to, yeah, here, which forces us to use file descriptor 89. So their proposal is, okay, we, we don't support open and continue using this return value for file descriptors. So they propose use a random or you hope or no open and I want 89. It's like, what the, what the heck would like basic income and uh, maybe I should maybe I should start uh, other would 
start a, a startup for that like state of the art super high performance whatever stuff this is not an this is in my opinion i'm really sorry to say this you can call this old men yelling at cloud and stuff rant but excuse me this is a, this is not our this is not an api this is garbage i mean who in their mind comes up with an api use this predefined random number for my next it's like uh, it's it's sad. Um, I I think what they should um, yeah so their proposal is all specific FD. Maybe I should actually check if they merged this already. I hope not. But so uh, read files so 2020 all specific this Linux kernel monolithic kernel stuff in um, 2020. Um, so yeah, my, so how this should have should be done? Uh, did I by the way? Um, so in my opinion, they should have a. Um, a much more elegant solution um, continue using that argument in your continued uh, ring and if the if this IOU ring I didn't out of the top of my head don't remember if it was flexible enough maybe maybe it's not as flexible enough to allow this but this would be instead of relying on a random number like 42 or 89 um, to continue to use this um, and also when they already propose APIs like what my solution was already years ago, then they should also not um, further discuss including the special read file because it is really a just super silly um, system call in my opinion. Anyway, that's it for this video. Um, there is a couple of more stuff. Maybe I just, I don't have an Intel Optane lying around here. I use some at customers, um, but uh, maybe I should actually order a bunch for some uh, high performance and low latency testing. Um, uh, Roland asks, uh, older article, no, this article is, f I think this article is brand new from November 25th. Um, I think it's from just uh, two weeks ago. Um, uh, Lawrence uh, says, anything that replaces hierarchical file systems with something better is a good idea. I think things surely different problem seems. So yeah, you're, you're talking about a different problem. Also, Microsoft had some stuff like um, database based file system stuff. Um, but uh, this is also, but Microsoft never, what was it? Was it RFS or something or ReFS or, oops, also wrong focus. Um, uh, resilient file system. I'm not sure if it was that, but once they had a, uh, project of next maybe it's Z. Um, not sure if Z is even is it in production maybe it is maybe it doesn't but uh, one thing uh, some company I'm not sure if it was Microsoft wanted some database files I think this also somehow never took off um, Anthony says interesting subject I think remember Bunny talking about some saying that still writing file systems and protocols as it storage devices still 1980s slow yeah um, Roland wonders if Fato will ever catch up with microcon desktop operating systems such as systems were widely used. Yeah, the, the thing is, of course, if we, and in a way, Mark, um, Intel, the 386 already a little bit designed with microkernel in mind in terms of the four, because many people don't know, most RISC CPUs only have kernel and user space. Intel CPUs also have four levels, um, plus a new minus one hypervisor and SMM stuff of minus one and minus two, um, theoretically, virtual numbering but um, Intel had four for theoretically they um, had in mind of kernel drivers and other library frameworks and uh, in as early as 386 uh, rings um, yeah thank you very much for the amazing results 2020 and this stuff. Um, so yeah, this were the Intel stuff of kernel drivers and stuff and applications. And this is of course only a very small thing. And there could, certainly could be many, many concepts that even for example, Apple is said to have previous videos, um, special instructions also for Objective-C or Swift um, dynamic dispatching stuff. So if you, if we really want it, um, and this is also my frustration and what I want to research here more is much more modern concepts. And if we would have more modern concepts, if microkernel would have taken more of, and we wouldn't have this cheapest 
stuff that Microsoft sold to 90% of the market um, for so long, there could have been, instead of the random garbage, impl Intel is implementing um, more modern concepts in hardware that um, are directly suitable to um, me mechanisms uh, needed for high performance microkernel stuff. Uh, Anthony Rim uh, reused stuff in the 2000s, uh, corporate environments. Uh, Morali also, uh, and opinion discarded sync, interesting topic and stuff. Um, happy that um, and you enjoyed this. And this is also what I continue to want to do here is presenting random stuff and also move our uh, research here. Um, Andreas Baumann remembers lately video from Ben O'Reilly's FreeBSD, what Unix costs us, IO interface and everything is a file. Yeah, so um, this is also what um, I, why I do not just take L4, right? I could just take L4, like the Gnode OS people and throw everything together, like a little bit QT here and a little bit there. Um, again, I've, I would want to have a much cleaner boot process and a much more cleaner stuff. And certainly that is not coming overnight and not next year. Um, I'm just still brainstorming and will not only have I tested GPU stuff because I knew protected mode stuff and memory management stuff, but I've never written until recently complete sure patched in Xorg and stuff, but or frame buffer and other device drivers, but not like rewritten uh, low level GPU stuff completely from scratch, which I um, always wanted to do for the research work and um, now will continue more with. Uh, kernel stuff and uh, I.O. stuff and uh, we'll see what we find there because there's certainly a, a lot of stuff that of course the monolithic Linux, uh, monolithic kernel like Linux and BSD always say but performance and performance and maintainability uh, honestly I think maintainability would be much better in stable API user space without the uh, Linux kernel randomly breaking everything and then every other kernel your Octane or your P3 stuff is broken because now YOLO nobody cares. Um, plus um, the annoyances of ARM and MIPS platforms of everything you need to specifically compile. Um, and I would find it much more amazing if you could take your, Nv Oops, your NVIDIA driver and um, not, not that I would want this but just as an example of not having to recompile and um, think about the APIs and breakage and um, continue to, sorry, use this stuff much more um, in user space. Um, sounds like an interesting video. Maybe I go watch this. So um, thanks for posting that. Um, Linus is just flexing his uh, proficiency in five languages. Um, what else do we have here? Um, Misunderstanding proposal, but it seems like there was a practical including what like that was intending a, what misunderstood probably was win a uh, win of s or maybe it was win of s three is what they have now but cannot be used as a boot device. Um, yeah, and, and Anthony, is this exactly what I mean with all the file system drivers? This is why I would or will soon continue to write more low-level code because, as I said before, I previous videos, um, the file system code is in the BIOS. The BIOS can already read FAT and ISO 966, uh, 9660 um, or 9660 or whatever you want to call it in English and uh, maybe even other stuff. And then the bootloader re-implements file systems and then the kernel re-implements file systems. And I have said this before, I would find this really amazing if we would have a very tiny API nano kernel layer and one file system implementation and having like one maybe shared object or something like one X2 shared object that you can use in your early bootloader microkernel stage and then with your um, fully booted um, and, and loaded systems with much many more components, um, which is something that um, is similar to the Windows situation of, yeah, can't use this. I also wonder what Microsoft is doing when it can't boot this. It's a little bit silly, but yeah, whatever this is, are the garish companies of operating out of their startup garish. Um, 
Lawrence writes, there might be an avenue for adding microkernel acceleration to risk five as an ISA extension. Yeah, I mean, we would first need to come up with, I mean, in classic microkernel, it's a context switching. Um, but the question is, if you apply modern, um, modern ring buffer kind of stuff, the only question is, it's not as easy. So you cannot just copy this because in a multi-server microkernel, you have multiple servers. So it's not like one ring buffer going to one kernel. So there is would be the question of how to um, efficiently do this. For example, QNX has already for decades to optimize the performance if an application like open read writes um, directly context switch to that. So not, not to lose this timeshare. Um, this is one thing being said why QNX has better performance than other competing microkernel systems of this direct I.O. mechanism, whatever that was directly. But anyway, you certainly find a lot of stuff, uh, interesting stuff in different operating systems. Um, I also want to certainly QNX um, never thought that it would be financial, previous videos, financial viable to have this QNX as a desktop server. It's a little bit unfortunate that you cannot like more directly license that or there was never, certainly understand there was big business in control um, embedded whatever devices like cars and industrial equipment and stuff, but um, would have been interesting to see more, more wider use of QNX for that sake. That was actually one of the more promising OS is uh, together with L4, obviously, but L4 is only a microkernel, not a full OS. Uh, Roland writes, one could speed up context switching specific to rice driver processing by banking CPU state multiple times and even just switching between the banks. Yeah, similar to, sounds a little bit like um, SMT uh, of having multiple hardware context switches. Um, say 20 device drivers running might be possible. And yeah, it, it also, um, there is actually some new RISC-V processor startup thing going through the news of potentially being very high efficiency. Maybe I make a dedicated video about this, of course, right now there's very little known to this, but um, maybe you could make for really um, high number, uh, high core numbers of, 128 and stuff, um, maybe just make 128 core RISC-V stuff and maybe plus whatever is needed to have very uh, low latency processing due to the sheer amount of cores potentially. Or, because certainly back in the day, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, um, there, there was single core CPUs and then dual quad core. And now of course we have here Epic thread ripping 128 cores. So certainly stuff changes quite a lot over the decades and the software design is senior with modern storage and um, IO APIs so stuck a little bit of what this costed us. Anyway, that's it for the summary. Um, I hope you learned something of um, Opinion discarded uh, also apparently enjoys better FS. Yeah, also running mostly better FS. Um, should ISO CDs of impact security, multi seed systems. What do we have there? Uh, speed up context switching, say 20 device drivers running, that may not be the issue. And then we security multi seeded systems. So, what do you mean in terms of switching between banks? Do you mean like Intel Spectre Meltdown kind of state, uh, leaking state there between the switching or... Anyway, so yeah, a lot of stuff. So the, the problem is of course, um, writing everything from scratch. Um, I'm still debating myself whether it's a good idea to write everything from scratch or whether to cut and paste stuff together from BSD systems or something. Um, that is something to be seen. Um, maybe cut and paste more stuff via prototyping and rewrite stuff later or something. But anyway, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, sharing, liking, and subscribing. And uh, also <laughs> in other news, new T2 Linux releases are out, right? I just today see that um, most of the other releases. So previous video 
T2, finally, a decade later, uh, 13 or whatever, 12,000 revisions um, of the latest and greatest all architecture supporting stuff. Uh, enjoy that while playing along at home, and I hope to see you soon for all the next videos and live streams to come.